Hey guys, in this video I'm going to review portable power station from AO Lithium and 420 watts panel. What is interesting about this power station that we can connect any 24 volts battery, so this station is battery agnostic. If you're interested, let's jump into the video. All items we're getting in individual package, right here is the two batteries, inverter and solar panel. Everything was packed pretty well and received this without damage. On the left side of power station we have three AC outlets, battery input port, on the front we have light right here, three USB ports, then buttons to activate light power station and turn AC output, then we have DC accessory port right here. On the right side we have unused port, those connection for parallel stations together, PV input port, AC input port and reset button. For USB we can get anywhere from 15 to 100 watts. Um, output is uh, limited to 20 amps and the power station rating is uh, 2000 volt amperes. Battery range is 19.6 volt up to 30 volts. Then um, from uh, accessory port we can get 120 watts and PV input is limited to 500 watts and the voltage range is 12 to 75 volts up to 25 amps. And AC input port is limited to 15 amps. In the package we are getting cable to charge station from AC grid, then we have two cables to connect batteries in series to make 24 volts, then we have this cable to connect batteries to power station, we are getting two 12 volts batteries LFP, 1.28 kilowatt hours capacity each, and then we are getting power station itself. Then right here we have solar panel, and uh, in the solar panel we're getting manual, of course, spec sheet right here. Then we have MC4 connectors and the uh, MC4 connectors. And on the other side, we can connect this to power station. Also, we're getting this item, which is really convenient to uh, find the correct solar angle. Here's how it works. One nice feature here for these stands to set up on a particular angle. It has a retractable cord, which is helping a lot to set up panel by one person. To connect batteries and the inverter, we have option for cable lens. We can get six meters or one meter. I was recording this test on August 4th and uh, we are getting uh, about 340 watts from solar panel. Now I'm gonna do a continuous load test. I have this heater, 1.6 kilowatts. I'm going to connect this to AC output. Station charging from solar panels, 300, about 320 watts. We are almost fully charged. Just gonna enable AC and start the heater. Draw about 1.5 let's do heat gun and we do 2 kilowatts let's wait about 20 minutes and see where we are we've got this error E8 about two minutes later after running all loads. Battery is fully charged. We have this icon blinking and it's not accepting any power anymore. I'm gonna do another load test. And add uh, 500 watts more. Let's see how it's gonna work this time. And we got the same error about three minutes later, E8. Now I'm going to test if it's pure sine wave. We have 1.4 kilowatts load, and if we touch multimeter, we're getting perfect wave with 50 hertz and 119 volts. Let's try to charge the station from AC. And here's another attempt to charge station from AC on the next day. And we're getting same E5 error. 
What is interesting, during the test I was inserting this plug and something snapped inside and now this plug is not gonna hold, it's just falling down. So it looks like outlet detached there. Now I'm going to disassemble station to see how well it's built inside. And that's what happened with the AC outlet. It has a cover which is supposed to lock on the sides and it's just unlocked and um, it was pretty close to shorten contacts together. And here's the station fully disassembled. We have this nice cover, metal. And here's the inverter part. I don't understand much here, but in case you do, here's the video. In my opinion, it's a poor design for AC outlet. All of those contacts are supposed to stay in place by this small cover with four pins. And if we push plug hard into outlet, they're gonna snap and it's possible that contacts will short. Also, it looks like power station has some problems with MPPT finding maximum point. Right now we're charging with 274 watts. If I'm going to disconnect uh, panel that one, we're gonna get about 220 watts from this panel, but if I disconnect connector, reconnect this back, then we're gonna get 330 watts, 340 watts. And uh, if I connect that one back, so it's gonna be two panels in parallel, now we're gonna get full 550 watts output. And it happened a few times, so whenever I'm leaving the station for maybe one hour, and the uh, light shade is going to any of this panel, it's going to drop production and not going to come back when the panel gets unshaded. From accessory port we should get 9 amps. Let's try. And we're getting 1.13 watts, 9 amps. Let's try to increase this. One sixteen. And it's shutting down. So we can do 9 amps continuous current and uh, about 114 watts. For USBs I'm going to try to charge laptop with USB-C port. Yeah, and we're getting 90 watts. It's about the limit what this laptop can draw. And that's all tests I want to perform for this station. I want to do stress test, but in my opinion, it doesn't make sense because it cannot handle two kilowatts continuous load for stress test is going to be more and uh, it's just going to shut down. So for solar panel, it's a great panel. In my opinion, it's really easy to set up with one person because of these like retractable legs. And solar panel is at 420 watts, so we can get about two, 2.5 kilowatt hours in one day, so we can fully recharge this station. One improvement that can be done is to provide plastic caps for these studs, so we cannot short them because power station is metal. If we set up this on a double battery, it's possible that we can short this. Or even provide some covers where we can install batteries in one stack and power station on top of this. The cons for this station, it feels like I've got some beta version because outlet, AC outlet snapped when I first time inserted plug there. Then it has uh, problems with MPPT charge controller when it's dropping production and to restore production we have to physically disconnect and reconnect panel. Then uh, we don't have Bluetooth communication between station and the batteries and when we charge in station is going to show that recharge time is one hour but if we connect via Bluetooth to the batteries it's going to be like three hours recharge time. Then, of course, it cannot handle 2 kilowatts continuous load, which is in specs for this station. On the good side of this station, it's battery agnostic. We can connect any 24 volts batteries, of course, which is great. In the general, it's easy to set up. And uh, of course, because it's modular, if you're taking this on a camping, it's gonna be more hassle to connect all wires together. But if you're setting up this in an RV or small cabin, it's gonna be uh, maybe beneficial because you can install batteries in one place and the power station in another place. I think that's all about this review. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.